Well, 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 hello. Uh, my name is Brandon Knapp, and I'm going to welcome you back to another story, re, uh, vo story voiceover, I guess is what you could call it. I, I don't really know what to call it myself, but <clears throat> I guess that's what I'm calling it. And uh, re about, I appreciate sure it was basically pretty much yesterday I, I, fin I did the record, I did, I, excuse me, did a voiceover for a story, uh, uh, like Asana from a story online X male reader. And right now I'm about to do one, uh, based on, uh, Medusa X autistic male reader. And with this one, I can relate a lot more to it because, uh, and I'm just going to say this once and I don't want to bring it up ever again after I'm only saying it once because I, you know, it's, I'm trying not to be ashamed of it. I am on the spectrum of autism, and also I ha I do uh, I have uh, something that's called Asperger's, um, and for me, uh, it's hard, very hard to just like look people in the eye for the most part. Like it's hard for me to look. I try to look kind of like have good eye contact with people. So this I can sympathize more, or I can relate to it as best I can. I should say. So anyway, and with this one, there's a little bit more bad, or probably. Lang some language that or wording that probably would get me maybe in trouble with YouTube. So best I can, I'm going to try and use some hopefully appropriate or somewhat less uncomfortable uh, wording to replace some of the words. Mm, excuse me. Ever since Athena cursed poor Medusa after she was abused by Poseidon, she was forced to live a life of isolation. Excuse me. No one could ever could look her in the eye or they would be turned to stone and die as a result. She's felt like an outcast since. This has garnered a sense of empathy from some people over the centuries she has been alive, though no, none could figure out how to break the curse. Not even he Hephaestus, the god of fire and, and smite, smiting, uh, could figure out a solution to her curse. Uh... The only thing he could do was keep it was keep working on an idea that may work for the people that could that see her at least. Now the year is 2021, the modern day era where some have moved on from the gods and their mythos. There are few a few that still love hearing about it and reading it. This is where a boy named Brandon Knapp comes in, which is again the reason why I I, ask, I type myself in with these. Um comes in he's different in some ways than most and maybe what medusa was waiting for after all this time uh greece is a nice country though the people in charge should take a financial responsibility class or something however i'm not here to dwell on that i'm here to get away from home for a bit and to look at some of the temple ruins and such i also want to go see the supposed cave medusa was said to be in if there was ever a tragic figure that deserved better, it was her. Athena's a bitch, and the ultimate example of I blame the victim. In fact, most of the Greek gods are bad people. Zeus is a, an abuser. Poseidon abusing Medusa. Athena cursed her. Apollo forces that woman Daphne to turn to a tree just to save her from being abused. Hera, even if her anger was understandable, threw a child off Olympus and drove Hercules to kill his own family. Good lord. <laughs> it's gone dark right real freaking quick. <clears throat> uh, there are only two I can think of that were decent, even if they had faults. Hephaestus and Hades. Sure, the former tried to force himself on Athena, but that's the only time she ever did that, and he was, respon and he was held responsible for it. Hades, though, tried to stay in his lane as much as he could. Anyway, I'm currently taking pictures of the ruins of Zeus' temple. Maybe calling him a, an, a, an abuser here is a bad idea. Not that I care, to be honest. He'd just prove me right if he struck me down here. Anyway, after I took my pictures, I walked away from the temple and looked at my map. I saw the cave I wanted to visit wasn't too far. I'd get there by dark, so I, ha I may have to camp out after I get there. And just explore in the morning. I then started start trekking that way as I listen to music. I do take some pictures of the scenery as I go, but overall, it was a slow and uneventful trip. I arrive at the entrance. Uh, excuse me. 
I arrive at the entrance of the cave as the sun is setting. I decided to set up camp. Doesn't take long, and I even get a fire going. I have a nice view of the ocean as the sun sets, uh, as the sun sets, which of course I took a photo of. I cooked some canned stew I brought with me before sitting there, uh, writing in my journal. I then get the feeling I was being watched, and then turn to the cave only to see nothing. I tilt my head but shrug before going back to my journal. Maybe it was a fluke. No one is out here after all. Now, from Medusa's point of view. Hold on. Okay. <clears throat> here I thought it was going to be it was to be another boring day, but one of my trips went off telling me someone was at the entrance to my cave. I grabbed my bow and arrows ready to defend myself. After centuries of no one daring to come here, someone has decided to. I won't let them kill me. I quietly make my way to the entrance but stop when I see a man sitting at a small camp, sitting at a small camp he made. He's eating something from a metal container and seems to be enjoying the sunset as he smiles. I don't dare move out of fear of him hearing me. I get a good look at him. He has short brown hair and blue eyes, if I am seeing them right. He looks so peaceful that I simply put my bow on my body and stare at him. I can feel my hair do the same. After he finishes eating, he pulls out a book and begins writing it. He then stops and seems to look side to side. I quickly hide my head as he looks my way. I wait a moment. I guess it was nothing, I heard his soft and kind voice say. I then peek over the rock and see him return to his journal. I then heard him talk to himself. And now in the morning, I'm going to explain the explore the cave a small bit i know it's likely empty but there's a part of me that wants to meet medusa i know what it's like to be treat, treated poorly for something beyond your control i had to be homeschooled due to it she didn't deserve her fate a thing a thing is such, just a bitch i heard him say that piqued my interest he wants to meet me does he understand does he think i deserve better i i honestly don't know what to say most of come here comment on how I'm a monster. P Perseus slew. I don't know how to feel. I, After a time, he yawns and goes into his tent. I wait until I hear him breathing softly before quietly making my way to his camp. I don't see much other than his backpack. I look in it and see a small device which I do not touch Alvoria. I may turn it on by accident. Other than clothes, a metal rod with glass at one end, and some clothes... There's nothing of note until I see his journal. I really shouldn't, but he piqued my he's piqued my interest. I grab it and open it. It's written in English, which I've learned through some hearing so ma so many others speak and write in as they explore my cave. There's not much other than his life in school and some stress in said school. He's due uh he is under due to things being due at a certain time. I then reach a section where he talks about a fellow classmate who exploded his temper when he learned this man's written essay got into a scholarly journal he, he quoted uh here how can an autistic moron like you who can't even look at people get into a journal uh, i refuse to accept the fact that an idiot person like him got in that fool was forced to leave the class but it's obvious that it hurt the man here i frown as i learn it isn't the first time he's dealt with this how he's been told he was nothing. How he's been told he was stupid or dumb, dumb, aka retarded. And how someone even had the gall to accuse him of being so mentally unstable he'd kill people and should. That angers me to no end. No matter. No wonder he said he understood. Because he does. I close the journal and look at the tent. I think I may. I, I think I think I may reveal myself to him. I haven't done this since those Christians blessed the cave from evil. I quickly go back into back in my cave thinking, maybe I find I finally found someone to befriend. I just hope I can trust him. Ah, uh, I have woken up and packed up after breakfast. I'm currently in the cave and see no evidence it has been lived in. I should have I should have should have expected this, but I can't help but feel disappointed. I shake my head as I head deeper. Oddly, though, I begin, to f I begin to feel the heat coming from somewhere. I follow it and see a single lit torch. Odd. I look around and see a few more lit up, light up. I then begin to back up, assuming this was some criminal's hideout. However, something tall stops me 
Al wraps her hand around my mouth to stop me from screaming. Shh, don't scream. I won't hurt you unless I had to defend myself, so don't scream. A female voice said. It sounded soft, but it had a sense of sadness to it. I nodded. Good. Now I'm going to show you my other hand so you know what to expect. She said softly before I see her other hand. It has some scales on it in a viper's pattern. No way. You're right in who you think I am. The woman let go, let me go, and I turn around. I see a, a, a large snake tail dragging behind a human-esque body. I see human sin exposed short of a few scales. Her chest is, is covered in some sort of beat-up leather armor. I then look at her arms, and it's what I expected. Half of the arms are covered in scales, as in the top of her hand, top of the hand. She has archer braces on, and her fingers have long nails. I then look at her face, and she looks worried. And she's beautiful. Her face is giving a soft, worried look. But I avoid looking her in the eyes. But, but, but I can see I can, as I scan her features that they have blue irises except in the center where I know is hazel. And her hair is just a group of snakes that are writhing around and staring at me. I then look at her face, albeit not in the eyes. She then gains a curious look before she lowers her body to talk with me. Before she can speak, I hug her, which she stiffens at. I'm so, so sorry for everything you've been through. You didn't deserve any of it. I said to her as I squeezed her tight. I felt her unstiffen before she actually hugged me back. Thank you. I'm not. Sh I'm sure you know, but I am Medusa. She said softly. How are you not stone? Most people that gaze upon me turn to stone, sure of the blind, and now you. She said before pulling away. I laugh a small bit. I'm Brandon Knapp, but Brandon is why I prefer. Is why I prefer. And to be honest, I just have a hard time looking people in the eyes. It feels uncomfortable. I agree with this. I admitted shyly. She still looked confused. I don't know why I'm like that. It's one of my the one of the aspects of my autism. I'm told. I explained further. She shook her head in a no fashion. No, not that. Whatever that is. I meant. How can you even look at me without turning to stone? She asked me. I began thinking with my eyes closed. I then nodded before looking at her. Well. Uh, maybe it's like I have to look in your, into your eyes directly, otherwise the curse is useless, I suggested to her. She then, she then began thinking before I saw her viper, the, her vipers on her head seemed to get excited as she looked at me wide-eyed. Then, would you stay and talk with me? I haven't talked to anyone in a, a long time, she said as she frowned and looked down. Every time someone came here, it was to try and kill me for their own purposes. She said sadly. I frowned at her and hugged her gently in response. She gently did the same, seeming to want affection. Of course. I'm here for the summer, so I have plenty of time. Can you show me around the cave? I asked before pulling back and looking up at her. She smiled and nodded before gently taking my hand in hers and leading me towards a tunnel. I'd be happy to. I keep the chambers I live in hidden. That... that That'll be what you want to see, she said to me, sounding happier than before. I smile and admire the feeling of her scales on my skin, though for a moment I felt as if I was being watched. Pop, pop. <clears throat> hmm. This I did not expect. I have been working on a way to nullify Athena's curse for thousands of years. And it is out and out of nowhere this human this human shows up and is immune. He didn't mention he can't look people in the eyes, which may be what is stopping the curse. If he isn't in any immediate danger, then I'll switch focus to making him something that can protect him. The humans have made glasses and contacts. I'll look into those. I stand and limp my way to my to my drawing table to draw to begin drawing up plans. I then hear a knock on my door before Someone enters. I see and I look and see Hermes holding a file and some letters for me. Likely Zeus complaining I won't make that Shroud of Eden he saw in a video game. That's funny to think of. Zeus complaining about a video game. I nod to him as he approaches me. Here's that file on that human you asked for. Everything we know about him is in there. And Serkei added some family history. Apparently he's in the descendants 
of some witches that were burned in the Salem witch trials. He said with a false sense of excitement. I shake my head. Witches, please, they are doctors of anything. And you can bet Zeus is still complaining about that trout. He's the only one that wants it other than Eris. He said before giving me the, the giving me the letters as well. I frowned at that at the name. He places his hand on my shoulder. At least you caught them, he said, trying to brighten my mood. I nodded. Enough of my failed love life. Thank you, Hermes, I said with a nod and a small small smile before opening the file and reading. I didn't hear him leave and, and, and look at him and see the looks curious. What? I asked. He looks at me. Just wondering what you're working on. I don't get many opportunities to see your stuff before it's done. He said, sounding curious. It's true to be fair. He's running letters and errands most of the time, so he doesn't get to see any projects. Well, I don't have anything made, but I'm revisiting an old project I was never able to figure out, I explained to him. He gave me a gesture to continue, and I rolled my eyes. I'm looking to see if I can make something to either stop or nullify a curse, I said before returning to the file. Which ones? Hmm. Uh, excuse me. Uh, he asked me, sounding curious. So many gods have cast so many curses. You have so many to focus on. Which one is it? He asked me again. I sighed and looked at him. Petrification, cockroaches, and and basilics, especially. I lied partially to the messenger. He seemed to get suspicious. I kept looking right at him. Uh, I want to tell Athena. I'd love to see her reaction if you succeed, he said, smirking. I sighed in small in relief before chuckling a small bit. So why did you need the file then, he asked me before leaning on the wall. Earlier this morning on Earth, I observed a human encounter. Medusa, for the first time in a few hundred years, he didn't turn to stone when you looked at her, and I was just wondering if he had a reason. He said something about not being able to look people in the eyes, so that may be how I, if not, stopped the curse. I explained. He seemed surprised, and I nodded. Yes, and ever since I tried to abuse Athena, I wanted to do something to help an abuse victim so as some penance in my mind. And Medusa didn't deserve her fate, I said, scowling. I heard H Hermes hum, and when I looked, he was nodding. A lot of us agree, especially Hades and Circe. Athena used the abuse as an excuse to curse her because she was better looking than Athena, he said, sounding frustrated. Before he could continue, the wings on his hat fluttered a small bit. He sighed. Duty calls. No worries. Your secret is safe with me, he said before he quickly ran out of my shop. I know he was telling the truth. The only time he'd out someone is if it was a danger to others. If I go back to the file and read what's there. Eh. Christ. Okay, sorry. Go back and read what's there. Not much to know at first, but when he got to grade school, I started to frown. This autism, uh, what it's called, garnered a lot of cruelty from his fellow humans in school. This was due to his fidgeting, being a bit sensitive to sound and touch, not being able to look people in the eyes. He also had an obsession with keeping things color-coded. Even the teachers were cool to him and justified the bullying by saying he was strange and different. I banged my fist on the table at that. Different? So what? From what I can read here, he tried so hard to be nice to everyone, and he got shit in return. Now it's not only penance, but a way to try and make up for the cruelty he faced. The cruelty I relate to. I've yet to become a human patron outside of those who work in my field. So I think I may have uh, I may have to try so I can further improve his life so he hopefully won't face the same cruelty I did and still do. Now, how do I go about this? Could I, could I reflect the curse away? Maybe. Medusa's inner chambers are wonderful and a tad creepy. I can see several poor souls who, who return the stone. Actually, it looks like marble. Huh. I can also I also see an interesting shield in the ground. <sighs> it's broken. I pick it up and and see its per, uh, Perseus mirror shield. I look at Medusa confused and she shrugged. I wasn't here that night. Athena turned me into an Indian-based creature and they ran run in pairs apparently. The one he killed was looking for me when he killed it. Had the same effect, but unlike my gaze, if your willpower is strong enough, you can resist that creature's gaze 
Luckily for him, the creature he needed it for didn't have the willpower to resist it, she explained as she approached me. I nodded as I felt the shield's texture under my uh, under my fingers. I sighed in re relaxation. Does it feel nice, she asked, sounding confused. Maybe to most people. It doesn't, but feeling something soothing, soothe with my sensitive well senses is kind of relaxing, I explained. I told her some of the aspects of autism as she already understood. She nodded. She un she nodded. Well, you can you can well you can have it. I know it's broken, but consider it a gift for being my friend. Medusa said kindly. I looked at her and shook my head before placing the shield down. I grabbed her hand and gently rubbed it with my thumbs. I don't need a gift to be your friend. I'm your friend because I want to be, and I relate to being an outcast. I said to her before her looking down. I felt her take her hand back before I, it cut my cheek. I looked at her as I felt her rub my face in her hands. Physical affection is foreign to me from anyone other than my parents, but her cool skin with her scales, smooth edges, make it feel wonderful. Were you tr truly treated that badly by your peers? She asked me, sounding concerned. I sighed, but I nodded my head in a yes fashion. She frowned. I'm sorry you had to face that. I understand what it's like, she said sadly. I nodded before hugging her gently. She hugged back. I hoped that the world w had moved on from discrimination like that, but it seems it seemed to regress when the years got reset and got worse, she said, still sounding upset. I just sighed at that before pulling back and looking at her. It's gone better, but there's still there's a huge stigma against certain types of people. People with issues like mine are treated poorly by most pe adults as they grow up. Even some families. Bullying in school by kids was awful, too. I had to be homeschooled because of it. It was rough, I explained with a sigh. She thinned her lips before hugging me again. She pulled back before looking around. She looked up towards a hole in the ceiling. It's almost lunchtime. Are you hungry? She asked me kindly. I nodded my head and she grabbed my hand with a smile. Come, I know a place we can relax and eat, she said before guiding me away. She led me to a room where there are a pile of pillows and some bedrolls. No doubt from the many that tried to kill her. She patted the spot next to where she was standing. I sat down and looked and took my pack off. I took out some stuff to make a sandwich before looking at her. She flinched as she, as she has every time I've done so due to her being to her fear of being me of turning me into stone. I just smile a small bit. I can make you one, too, if you want, I offered her, smiling. She blushed at my offer, but shook her head no, which made me tilt my head. You need to eat, right? I asked a bit confused. She nodded before she grabbed her bow. I do, but I need a lot of protein. I'll be back, okay? She asked me, smi she asked me smiling. I nodded, and she left quickly to, to hunt, I'm guessing. I make my sandwich and enjoy it as I relax. It doesn't take too long to finish. Take long to finish, excuse me. Um... I, took a, I take a look around her room and see many types of bows on her walls. Seems like one from every era. Hell, she even has a compound bow, though it seems to be broken. I stand up and walk over to it. I take it off the wall and look it over. I can see the issue, so I will do something nice for her. I take apart the area that's broken to investigate it. Seems a screw is missing. I take a small tool out of my bag and remove... And remove a, a, a fellow screw to see its size. I smile seeing an opportunity. I take my, out my laptop and remove one of its screws. It'll function without it. I'll just have to make I'll just have to make sure I replace it later. I put the screws in after retensioning, retensioning uh, the string. Once I've I'm I'm done, I test it and it works great. Then I hear her approach and I look and look at the entrance. She enters with some meat slabs that she placed on a makeshift grill on fire. She looks at me and I present the bow. I fixed it, I said as I showed it to her. She seems surprised before taking it and testing it. She smiles, seeing it works well. Before you ask, um, before, before you ask, I just want to do something nice for you. You deserve it and so much more. I said, smiling as she seemed to blush before putting the bow back and hugging me tightly. I hugged back, smiling. We only met today, and yet I feel like I've known him my whole life. I never expected such kindness in my life, and yet here he is showing here he is showing nothing but acceptance and kindness. It makes my heart beat fast. Uh, before I pull away, I feel him kiss my cheek, which makes me blush. I pull back, and he's looking down, blushing. I can't fight the blush or smile on my face before I kiss him on his cheek. His blush deepens as he smiles, which makes me smile in turn. 
I turn and grab one of the meat slabs which had been cooked, which has been cooked, and sit down with a makeshift plate to eat. As I am eating, I can feel him looking at me. Can I touch your hair? He asked as if it were normal. I look at him and swallow. I give him a questioning look. I just want to know what they feel like is all, he said to me honestly. I stared at him for a moment until I felt my hair get excited the idea. I nodded and got closer to him. I saw him lift his hand to my head, but stopped as he let the wiper sniff it. He waits for a moment before lowering it onto, onto the top of my head. I nearly shivered from his gentle touch as I felt my hair cover his hand. He rubs gently back and forth before he pets the snakes. I feel them calm down a bit as he does so. It feels weird, he said softly. I frowned a bit, thinking he's teasing me. In the best way possible, I heard him say as he continued. I perked up at that. It feels like an unfocused massage. I kind of like it, he said happily. He said sounding, sounding happy. I turned my head and looked at him. He has his eyes closed and seems relaxed. Just like when he touched the shield. He opened his eyes and smiled at me. Thank you, he said softly. I felt myself blush. <sighs> Went on my head and closed my eyes, enjoying the, the affection. You're welcome, I said softly. We then began chatting uh, a small bit. He, well, he ended up asking about what Greek history I knew, since his thesis, as he called it for school, is about Greece. I was happy to tell him about my home and even relive fond memories of my time before I was turned into what I am. He saw my sadness and comforted me. Up. You're not a monster, he assured me softly. I shake in his arms as I let my emotions out. You were dealt a bad hand thanks to a jealous bitch, he said to me seriously. I pull back and look at him. Jealous? You don't know. He said sadly as he looked down. He gently grabbed my shoulders and gave him a, t a gently squeeze. Athena, she didn't curse you because you were abused in her temple, She said. he said sadly. He took a breath as my heart sank into my stomach. It was just conven a convenient and shitty excuse. She, he, she, he t took a moment and looked down. Curse you because you are more beautiful than her, he said kindly. I go wide-eyed and pull away from him. No. No, she she wouldn't, I said with a shaky voice. He just looked at me as I clenched my fist in anger. No, I said, punching a wall behind me as I turned around. I was nothing but a faithful servant to her. I even tried to stay a virgin as she has. And she turned on me like that. I yelled out in anger and sadness. Uh, I, uh, anger. I turned and glared at Brandon until I saw him covering his ears and shaking a bit. I then realized that I was scared and I tried and... Uh, I, I was scared and I tried and tried to calm down. I then approached him and seem, he seemed to look overwhelmed. I grabbed his face and gently look at him, but he's looking right through me. I then began thinking about how to help him. He told me some things that can help him help when his stresses when they get overloaded. I then nod and gently wrap my tail around his body to just under his arms. I then take his hands and place them in my hair where they go to work, work moving about. I follow the same motions with my tail and feel his shaky breath get calmer. He then looks at me and seems exhausted. I grab his face with my hands gently. I didn't mean to. Uh, I'm sorry. I said as I sadly as I looked at him. I just I don't. I said trying to process his words from before. He moves his hands from my ha my head and grabs my face as well and wipes the tears away. It's okay. I understand. I thought you knew. If I knew if I knew you didn't. I wouldn't have. I placed a finger on his lips and shake my head, letting him know it's okay. He nodded. I then felt more tears fall. He thinned his lips and wrapped his arms around my neck to pull me close to him. I did the same and cried into his shoulder as he rubbed my back. I thought that I stayed that way for a long time, just laying my emotions at Athena's betrayal, betrayal out. He just comforted me for the hours I clung to him for dear life. Um... After some time, I do, uh, I do let him go and smile at him and thanks. He says nothing, but does give me a soft look. The rest of the day was spent mainly in my chambers, where we talked more with breaks from my emotions as he as he gladly helped in any way he could. I did try and not, I did try and not to overwhelm him again. At some, 
At some time, he fell asleep leaning on me. I, seeing it was the night, I just smiled and let him sleep with me. I pet his head as he slept. Um, and couldn't help but smile. I feel so lucky to know him as I do. I'm glad I took a chance with him. I've been here with Medusa for the past week. It's been wonderful. She's been she's very kind to me and even has gone out of her way to learn more about my autism from me. She wants to be prepared if something happens. I explained everything I could and she's been nothing but kind and caring. However, today I need to go into the nearest town and get food and stuff for myself. She's worried with some uh, that something will happen if I leave. I'm currently hugging her to try and ease her worry a bit, a small bit. I'll be fine. I just need supplies and to show my face before anyone assumes I'm missing and come to search for me. I said to her before pulling back. She sighed and took a breath to calm herself down. She nodded. Okay, just be safe, okay? I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose you. She said to me softly. I smiled and blushed at what she said. I'd be lying if I didn't say. If I said I didn't feel something for her. I nodded, which she smiled at before kissing my cheek softly. I blushed more as she pulled away. I, I, I will. I, I'll be back this evening. I stuttered nervously. She smiled and nodded before I turned to walk away. I tried to calm my nerves as they leave. Why did I have to get a crush on her? I doubt after what happened, she would even think about being in a relationship again. I shake my head and make my way to town. Once I once there, I go straight to my hotel room and shower. After that, I go to a store and buy enough supplies for the next couple of weeks, plenty of food and snacks and so on. After that, I decide to go to lunch at a restaurant. After I am seated in order, I update my family and explain I had no signal while I was camping. They figured as much, but were glad to hear from me. After a bit, uh, I feel as if I'm being watched, thinking it was just anxiety. I try to ignore it. It doesn't go away. As I, so I look around and see a black-haired woman looking at me. That She saw my, me look and smiled at me. I just wave and go back to looking at my photos. I then hear someone approaching me. Thinking it's the waiter, I look up only to be met with the woman from before. She's got blue eyes. I can see I I uh, I can now see and she has darker skin tone. She's also pretty, but I don't care. I go to speak but she beats me to it. Sorry for staring. I just noticed you and became curious, she said to me kindly. That sounds like a half truth. She then gestures to the chair in front of me. May I? she asked me. I shrugged and she sat down in front of me. I'm Athena. My name is Athena, she said smiling. I raised a brow which made her chuckle. I know, she said kindly. I'm Brandon. I'm wondering I wonder if you'll be as interesting as that girl named Hera from school. I, I swear she wasn't human, I said, which made her chuckle again. You think I'm joking, but every time I've met someone named after a god, they've been very interesting people. Like Hera, for example, had a pet hawk, rode a motorcycle, wore leather jackets everywhere, and was gorgeous yet ne and was gorgeous yet never dated uh anyone from what I know. I explained which made the woman laugh a bit. Uh, we'll be, well, maybe being named after a god gives people chaotic energy you aren't used to, she explained. To which I kind of agree with. She says, so tell me, what brings you to Greece, she asked kindly, which made me laugh. I'm touring the ruins and cities. The Greek mythos has always been a favorite of mine, so I wanted to come and see the country in, uh, it began in. I explained, which made her smile more. I went. I even went to the cave Medusa supposedly stayed in. It was just an empty cave before you asked. I said, not wanting to reveal the truth, she nodded as she listened. So this is the human Afro, uh, Aphrodite told me about. She was right about a few things, one being he is handsome and, uh, and another being his intelligence. Though I find it interesting he would lie about meeting, uh, meeting Medusa. Though I suppose it's for the best. Humans today won't be able to handle things like that. Though it does anger me that that monster bonded with this man before I could. Well, I'll just have to pay Medusa a visit and tell her to back off. We talk for about an hour as we eat, and I do enjoy his company. He then looked at his phone. I have to go. It was nice talking to you, he said as he stood and grabbed his backpack. 
He has already paid, so it makes sense. I stand up with I stand with him and gently touch his arm before he his which his head immediately looks at at it. He then looks back at me and I smile softly. I do hope we can meet again. I enjoyed your company, I said kindly. He smiled and nodded before waving goodbye and, and leaving. I sigh as I watch him go. If I had gone to him at, at the part part the non as they planned, we would be together, but no. Medusa showed her face and he stayed with her. I walked out of the building and once I was far enough far enough away, I changed back into my normal attire and transported myself to Medusa's cave. I enter and see her sitting and waiting, likely for Brandon to return. I uh this one second shit. Oh, okay. Her snakes look at me. And hiss, which makes her look at me. Unlike before, when I would visit, she would be afraid but respectful. Now she didn't even flinch and seemed to stare me down. Hello, Medusa. I wish to speak with you concerning a human he met, I said with authority. She seemed to get almost defensive as she stands to meet me. Again, I sense some defiance from her, but she may be may just be attached to the human. Why? Why are you... Wow, you want to turn in, him into a monster for being more handsome than the gods like you did to me? She asked full of scorn. I became angry at her tone, the fact she knew the truth behind my actions. I was nothing but a faithful servant to you, uh, and, and you betrayed me. For what? A petty sense of jealousy? It wouldn't have mattered since I intended to stay a virgin as long as you have until the day I died. You were just waiting for an excuse to ruin my life, she said, as I saw her snake eyes, snake's eyes and her own glow with power. I slammed the bottom of my spear into the ground as I lit, as I glared her down. Silence. You dare to speak with me with such insolence? I asked, shouting. She didn't even flinch. Just made me angry, but then she spoke again. He's right. Speak the truth to those in the wrong, and they will be enraged. Hmm. You're nothing more than a petty, vengeful, vengeful despite. She said, still glaring me down. I know you won't kill me. I won't suffer if you do, and Brandon would never speak with you again. He'll know who did it, she said with a matter-of-fact tone. I grow even angrier at, what, at that, despite the fact she is my own old couch. <sighs> uh, I raise my spear in anger until a voice cuts me off. She's right, I hear Brandon say. I stop and turn to see him walk into the cave. I try to speak, but can, but can only stutter out responses. He walks past me into Medusa. You okay? I hear him ask as I watch him. I see how he's gotten away with looking in her face. He can't look people in the eyes. Medusa nods and turns back to me. I knew something was off with you. I'm a foreigner in here, and a gorgeous woman just happens to walk up and speak with me. Please, he said, not sounding happy. Why are you here? He asked as he stood next to Medusa, who sneakily grabbed his hand. I come out of my stupor and speak. I'm here to make sure you are not corrupted by a monster. You know my reasons, which are far, fair enough, but I also know that those emotional outbursts are why you believe in us. And the Norse gods more than the Christian or Muslim god, I said, trying to stand proud. He shook his head. Uh, that means you should know I judge your actions as I would a fellow human, he said seriously, as uh, I feel my heart race. Uh, I do not wish to lose the one meant for me. Uh, maybe so, but I have moved on from such actions. Otherwise, many of your actresses would be in the same position as Medusa. I explained as they gave me the same stare. <sighs> Sorry. Aphrodite told me of your existence. She told me we are meant to be together. I can offer you so much wisdom of the gods, your own powers. We can take care of your family and even give you immortality. I said, uh, I said, trying to, to show what I can give him. However, at the last one, he empty chuckles. He simply chuckles. I tilt my head at him. A thing isn't beautiful because it lasts. It's a privilege to have been loved. He said, looking at me. I'm shocked at his response. I am not interested in rewards when it comes to relationships. I'm looking for a connection, he said, as I saw him grip and reduce his hand back. I just stare at him for a bit before I feel some anger bubble to the surface. What does she have that I don't? Hmm? What has she done to earn that connection? I said to him, sounding upset. 
I saw Medusa blush as I as I just outed what they may be feeling. He looked down before looking at me. <clears throat> she took the time we spent together uh, to get to know me and get to know, and I got to know her. We are both outcasted for things beyond our control. While I am while I am ridiculed to no end for my autism and what makes me do and and what it makes me do, she is hunted and looked down upon because you couldn't look past your jealousy and jealousy and help an abu a, a abuse victim. He said bluntly. I said I was sad to hear he was put down for how he was, how he is, but was upset at what he said. I don't want him to. Lo I don't want to lose him to her. If that's what you want, we could build that connection. It is not like I don't have that at the time. I said as I felt myself get desperate. He sighed, just sighed, and closed his eyes for a moment. He then opened. He then opened them and gently shook his head. No. I can forgive many things, but punishing a, an, an abuse victim instead of the abu uh, abuser is not something I can just let go of so easily. You and I both know she didn't deserve it. Then again, a lot of the people the Olympians have hurt, abused, or cursed didn't deserve it. I'm sorry, Athena, but my answer is no. He said to me calmly. There was no hatred or anger in his voice, and he was telling the truth. I feel I don't know how to feel. After all this time, I was told I would find someone to love, and it was meant to be him, or so I was told. If ju if it just so happened that before I could meet him, he decided to take a detour to this cave, and, j and Medusa just ha so happened to show herself. This is not what was meant to be. I grip my, sh my spear tightly in anger. No, I refuse. I bang my spear down, and they both look at me again. I have an idea to settle this dispute. I said to them as Brandon looked unamused. We play a game of chess. Me versus Brandon. If I win, you come with me and I will leave Medusa alone forever. If you win, I said, I said seeing what he would say. He actually scowled at me, which took me off guard. You think I'm stupid? Me playing a game of strategy against the, god, the one god who is practic practically the strategist? I'm not that stupid. Why don't you just leave us alone? He said bluntly with and with a bit of anger. He's even looking me in the eyes. I'd be ecstatic if the situation were different. I would strike her down and take you if you prefer. I threatened. It's more of a bluff since I did. if I did strike her down, he would do anything with his power to stay away from me forever. His emotions took over as he stands in front of Medusa protectively. Uh, you can say what you want about me, but you will not touch her, he said, glaring me down. That bravery makes me excited. If I win you, win, if I win, you walk out of this cave and never bother the two of us or my family again, he said to me sternly. I smirk and snap my fingers, which summoned a, two, a table and two chairs. We take our seats. He looks at Medusa, who looks worried. He smiles gently at her. It's all right. No matter what, you'll be safe. That's all that matters. Uh, he said softly. He came. She came up to him. But if she wins, you'll be unhappy. She said, sounding emotional. He just smiles and gently grabs her cheek. She stops as she gently rubs his fingers on the scales of, of her on her cheek. But you'll be safe. That's what matters. He said gently. I want to scowl, but refrain from doing so. Medusa seems to get glassy-eyed before kissing him on the cheek. I have to refrain from letting my anger control my power. He blushed, but quickly sh sh shook it off before facing me. Let's get this over with, he said before moving upon one space ahead. I smirked as I moved two spaces ahead. This should be easy. Uh, time skip, time skip because describing chess is boring as hell. <laughs> I set my trap at, at the beginning of my game and have slowly crept them forward. As I expected, her knights began slaughtering my pawns and such and such. Yet the one I moved for the trap remained untouched. That will end here. I watch as she takes my last bishop, leaving me with three pawns, my queen, and of course the king who's backed into a corner. She seems smug as she can be, but she just doomed herself. Why don't you give up? If you do, we'll visit your friend here. After all, 
you have uh after all you have knights no bishops only one rook and one one your queen is cornered and your king is a mere two moves away from dying all that you have to have is your blank she sm she paused as she firmly finally looked at the whole board as her uh, as her eyes slowly widened you're you she said looking at me up at me surprised i then used my trap pawn takes queen checkmate i said simply as she sits there stunned i looked i stand as the board and pieces vanish now don't bother her again i said as i said as i simply simply as i walked over to medusa who hugged me You hugged me cheering. The loud cheering does bother my ears, but I don't care as I hug her back. You won. I never thought she could be mean. She said, sounding stupid happy. I just smile and hold her right tight as she does the same to me. She then gasps as she looks up. I turn around as I see Athena in tears, raising her spear at us. I stand in front of Medusa as it charges forward. I prepare for death, but it never comes. I open my eyes and see a large hand stopping the spear. Enough, Athena. You were lied to. Aphrodite lied to you. They shouted at her. She goes wide-eyed and looked at looks at him. My ex-wife wanted to prove that you were nothing above that you weren't above earthly pursuits such as love and making love. He said as she simply slowly let her spear down. Her tears only pick pick back up. She drops her spear and falls to her knees. No, please tell me you're lying, Hephaestus. She said to the large man. He shook his head no and look and she looked at us. I'm, I, I'm so sorry. She said as she began to openly cry. I frowned as I looked at her. I was so excited to finally meet someone to love that ma I made me be. Um, uh, look at the man. I, uh, I was so excited to finally meet uh, find someone to love that made me be the monster. I'm so sorry, she says, crying. I look at the I look at the man as he sighs. I look at Medusa as she nods at me. I walk up to Athena and kneel down to hug her, which causes her to gasp. Um, it's uh, it's okay. Uh, she she clung to me and she and buried her head in my shoulder. It's okay. As I rubbed her back, I look over and see Medusa looking at her before coming down and rubbing her back gently. It takes some time for her to calm down before pulling away and wiping her eyes. She is still looking down as I try to come up with something to say. I've been, th I've been, I then think of something. If you want to love Athena, you should go find it. Don't wait for someone to tell you they are waiting. Uh, find them and get to know them. That's for far healthier than what happened here. Um, I said to her gently, she looked down as she began to think before looking back at nodding. Uh, I smiled as I helped her as uh, her as I helped her up with Medusa. You're right. I shouldn't have waited around for it. Uh, she said, smiling a uh, small bit. She then helped looked at Heffa. I'm just going to Heffa. Thank you. You were telling the truth when you said you were trying to make up for what you did. Uh, she said to him as he nodded in reply. She smiled. Keep it up, she said, smiling. Uh, uh, she then looked at Medusa and frowned. For what it's worth, I wanted to turn you back no, ma no more than a month after it happened. Uh, but I asked Circe what would happen if I did, and she did. You, she said you turned to dust and your soul may be lost. I think I'm missing, I'm skipping something. Uh, I guess this is, okay. Why didn't you tell me when you visited? Uh, Medusa asked, shot, sounding shocked. Athena looked away in shame. I was ashamed, I was so angry that people thought you were better than me and I was too prideful to consider my actions angry so i just she stopped as she looked at medusa you were the you were my most faithful priestess and i betrayed you she said before kneeling in front of her please forgive me she said looking down medusa goes wide-eyed before looking at me i nodded yes and since i know holding grudges is not healthy after all if i held grudges for everyone that wronged me i'd be miserable and pretty much every uh every, pretty much hate a whole city's worth of people medusa smiled at athena um 
I forgive you. Just help people that were blamed for what they, happened to them, like me. She said to Athena gently. Athena nodded before briefly hugging Medusa and standing close and standing. What she then looks at, uh, she then looks at me and smiled before going back at Medusa. Uh, you're a lucky woman to have his heart, Medusa. Treat it well, Athena said, smiling as I blushed hard at her revealing the truth. She laughed before vanishing from the cave, see, cave seeming happier. Beyond saving us, thanks, by the way. Why are you here? I asked I asked him, trying to calm my bush down. He chuckled before presenting me with a pair of contacts. He chuckled before, present, uh, before presenting me with a pair of contacts. I raised a, bro, a, a brow at that. Uh... For the longest time, ever since I had, I tried to force myself uh, on Athena. I've been trying to find a way to perform penance for my actions. So one thing, uh, so le, um, just so. Hold on a second. Sorry, I've been trying. Uh, so one thing I've been trying to do is find a way to make uh, Medusa's curse useless. After seeing you and how you avoided turning to stone, I was inspired. So hold still, he said as he approached me. I did so and gently held my eyes open so they put the contact. So they put the contacts in my eyes. I feel the uh, the bond with my eyes, and then I don't feel them anymore. There, they bound. They bond with your lenses, lens, and will act as a filter. Try it, he said, smiling as he gestured to Medusa. I turned to her and see her, to see her blushing up a storm. We stare into each other's eyes and nothing happens. I can see them in all their yellow and hazel glory. As she gasps and I, lo and I look at him, he chuckles. A little hope from Circe and this is the result. Also want to do something kind for someone like who is like me. You shouldn't be treated differently just because... Uh, just because di uh, you act differently in some areas than others. He said to me in a gentle tone. I smile and go to speak, but he stops me. Up, uh, you can thank me by treating her right. Also, I felt something in you in her room. I left, some, left something in you in her rooms. Teleporters. Once you go home, all you need to do is step on it, and poof, you can see each other whenever you want. He said, smiling wide before turning to leave. He winked at us before vanishing from the cave, leaving us alone. I looked to Medusa and approach her. When I get close to her, she j we just stare at each other in the eyes for a time. She seems mesmerized as we do so. Slowly but surely, she places her hands on my cheeks and gets a closer look at me. Uh, she says nothing, but we both know. We both move at once and embrace each other in a gentle, loving kiss. She wraps her arms around my neck as I wrap mine around her back. It's a slow and f it's slow and full of emotion. It's a it's obvious this is something we she wanted, and I won't lie, I was in doubt I would ever get it. We stay connected like this for as long as we can. She since began come uh, be, begun combing her hand through my hair when we pull away. As we so we we just stare at each other as we see her eyes get glassy. I gently cup her cheek and use my thumb to wipe away uh in tears that fall. I I thought I'd be alone forever. She said, smiling through her tears. She takes a small, shaky breath before continuing. Uh. Then you came along and proved me wrong. I I love you. God struck me down if it's too soon to say, but I love you, she said, kissing me again briefly. When she was done, I looked at her. To be honest, with the way I was treated by my peers and even some adults, I thought there'd be no woman in the world that could love me. I said, looking at her, she gave me a concerned look. The ridicule was so bad in middle school that I stopped as I rubbed my arm where a log scare is, uh, scar is. I tried to die, I said, looking down. I heard her gasp before hugging me tightly. I didn't even get an apology from anyone, but the principal suggested I be homeschooled for my own sanity. So I never tried again. I felt alone, I said before looking at her. That, but then I met, you, I, meet, I met you, and it was like the sunrise to my dark thoughts. I don't care if it's too soon. Sometimes you just, you, you just know. I love you too, Medusa. I promise you'll never feel alone again. I said, giving her a loving smile. She smiled back and we kissed again, one of many to come. Some people have had bad reactions to autism. Some treat it as a disease. Some as a disorder that makes you stupid. And a few see it as a horrid thing to be destroyed. But there are a few that can look past it and see the person underneath the issues that come. 
that come with uh, come with it. Medusa took time to see past my quirks and saw me for me, and I did the same with her. Kindred spirits, I suppose. But as a result, a healthy new relationship is born, and I am excited to see how we make this work. No matter how weird a couple we are, though I swear I can hear a woman laughing in, in the distance. Af Aphrodite, you little shit. Well, there we go. And uh, once again, this was created uh, on DeviantArt by the very, I'm going to say very talented Silver Zero Wisps, uh, who, uh, as I did before with the uh, Asana XML Reader uh, story voiceover, I'm going to leave a link to the original story in the description, uh, description below. So if you want to check it out for yourself, you can. And yeah, have a good day, everybody.